everybody thinks they're good at Tetris. I mean, who, who's not thought at some point, hey, I'm great at this game? And so when you sit down and you show them what good really means, and just how fast you can play this game, or just how accurately you can play this game, people always think, I've lost. You know, oh, it, you've lost it now. You'll never be able to do that. And then you bring it back, and that's the best feeling, because everybody thinks it's over, and, and it isn't. It's definitely not over. I'm, uh, I'm James, and I'm working here as a PhD student. Um, I'm doing something called statistical mechanics, but don't be put off by the word statistics. I know it's a scary one. Uh, I'm actually working with Roger, uh, Professor Bowley, and we're doing some really cool stuff towards my PhD. So hopefully, by this time next year, I shall be Dr. Cluett, which I'm looking forward to enormously. I think most people know now that um, I also play arcade games. I'm particularly, I'm addicted to Tetris. It's a very compulsive little game, I think. I just went along for a while just playing for my own satisfaction. By chance, I posted a score on a bulletin board on the internet. And a guy came back to me then, his name was Steve Krugman, and he said, I, I can answer this. Um, if you've really scored that, then that's incredible. That's way above the world record. This was maybe two weeks before the World Championships, the classic arcade games expo in Las Vegas. And so he invited me. He said, well, you know, come to Vegas and, and prove it. It was quite intense. And I remember I wasn't playing my best. I was unnerved by the whole situation. But there was a point when a guy called Billy Mitchell, who is the world record holder for Pac-Man and Burger Time and a whole bunch of other games. I think he's, he's in the Guinness Book of Records um, several times for arcade gaming. And he was playing a game called Burger Time, which has never been released in the UK. And he was about to complete it. He was about to finish the whole game. And so everybody ran off to watch Billy. And the, uh, the place where I was went very quiet. And I got a moment of peace. And I just sat there and I played my game. And it all came together. Everything was just clicking beautifully. And by the time people came back, I was only 200,000 points off the world record. Um, and making good progress, and I thought, I'm going to do this. And everybody came back and gathered around, and it was big, you know, saucepan eyes. Look, he's doing it, he's doing it. And my hands were dripping in sweat. I, all over the joystick was just wet. And uh, I got one level short of the world record, and I slipped. And it, at that speed, everything goes wrong just, just like that, and it's gone. So this close this close. And so I, I hold the, the second highest official score of all time. What's that? That was 1.57 million. Um, and the world record is 1.63 million. So really close. Uh, well, I won. Uh, sorry. Yes, that's quite important. Uh, I went to the World Arcade Championships and I won. Uh, and so in 1999, I was the World Arcade Games Tetris champion. Um, and that is something I've been dining out on ever since. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, it, I think it's probably got me every job interview I've ever been for. Because people just want to know how sad you are. You know, you, they look at your CV and they think, we've got to meet this guy because he's probably got a beard down to here, you know. <laughs> um, so I hope I don't disappoint them when I meet them. To be that good at Tetris, it takes a, a, a certain level of focus. My friends at, at college used to call me Obsessive James, and that's true. I, I am very, very obsessive, and that helps with Tetris, but it, it helps with physics. It helps with everything that I do, because you've got to have a certain amount of focus or willingness to sit there and apply yourself, and when it doesn't work, you've got to do it again, because there, there will be times when it doesn't work in both physics and Tetris. Uh, and so this sort of obsessive, compulsive, very easily addicted um, personality has, has really defined my life. It's, it's got me where I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody's got a hero, right? So in 2007, um, I was invited to play at Nottingham's Game City event and have a go at the world record here in Nottingham. And so I, I went down. And um, I was standing playing at a machine that bought in especially for me. 
and uh, going along quite well, I thought. And then out the corner of my eye over here, I just saw this guy and I thought, no, it can't be, it can't be. Um, but it was a guy called Alexei Palinov, and he's the guy who wrote Tetris. And they'd brought him along too, but nobody had told me. It was a complete surprise. So the next thing I know, I, mean, I was shaking. I was like, no, I'm playing in front of Alexei. I can't possibly be <laughs> do this at all. Um, and I was just, I was quaking. I was nervous. I was excited. Um, it was a real pleasure, actually. And I, I don't know. I guess he meets Tetris geeks every day. Um, but for me, uh, it was a fairly overwhelming experience. I was really proud. And uh, yeah, he signed my Game Boy. So. Uh, this, this was a gift to me from, well, it was a very thoughtful gift to me from an ex-girlfriend of mine, and uh, I can't play it anymore. <laughs> but I do have Alexei's signature right here, so um, this is one of my proudest possessions, and I keep this on display in my house. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing to have, I think. <laughs>